I'd like to show you a fascinating game between Ramesh Babu Pragnananda and Hans Niemann. This is from the, the Generation Cup, this online rapid play tournament. And, well, we have two players from the younger generation. Prag, always good to see his game. 17 years old, such an extraordinary talent. As is 19-year-old Hans Niemann. And this was a really uh, very double-edged game that these two played. So remember, it's 15 minutes on the clock plus 10 seconds per move. And Prag goes for... Well, he allows a Nimzo Indian. And he has experience from this position on, on both sides, white and black. Um, there was a game in Reykjavik earlier in the year um, where he defeated uh, Gukesh. Um, Prague was playing black in that game. So he's he's developing a lot of experience with this. So, so this is a Rubenstein variation. And, and here, well, knight f3 is the traditional old move, knight e2 also possible, but Prague simply takes on d5, and we get this fixed structure. And then he played knight e2. His game against Gukesh went a, excuse me, not a4, a3, uh, but he played knight e2. And he has played in this way before. So uh, Niemann could have anticipated this. And he played b6, which I think well, is, is a very sound move. So at the moment, the bishop is blocked. But by playing the pawn to b6, that's going to support the c pawn coming to c5, attacking white center. And the bishop drops back to d6. So, I mean, you could say this is you know, one of the most aggressive ways to play the position. Oh, it's very classical, frankly. So the bishop looks down at h2. You never know, there could be uh, a Greek gift sacrifice if white isn't careful. Um, Prague actually just played rook c1 here. Um, I, I, I can imagine many many of us scaredy cats might, might play a move like knight g3 to, to block this, but... Uh, he played rook c1, and it's kind of tempting to take this. However, I have a feeling uh, that white is going to survive that one. But yeah, it's tricky. Uh, you know, queen queen g5, maybe maybe f4. Yeah, that's probably the, the problem with, with this variation. Niemann played c5. So, very classical. Black puts pressure here, but also might well just go for c4 uh, to establish later on this queenside pawn majority. So Prague doesn't want to allow that and takes on c5. So now Black has the so-called hanging pawns. But I think this is a pretty good version for Black because these bishops are very nicely placed. So that, you know, sometimes if d4 happens, then both pieces are unleashed on the king side. And, well, I'm not surprised that Prague went for knight g3 here. Uh, because it feels like black is getting closer to playing this one. Particularly if, you know, that pawn is pushed forward with d4. But in any case, this feels to me like a, a really pleasant position for black. You know, I'm, I'm kind of used to these these positions uh, playing the queen's gambit declined with black where well, you often get hanging pawns and I've had far worse hanging pawn positions than this playing with black but also with white as well you know this bishop feels a bit passive on d2 normally white would want to have b3 and bishop b2 but on d2 yeah it just feels a little bit cramped Knight comes back to e2, so actually that makes room for the bishop to come to the long diagonal. Knight e5 hits the bishop, looks looks very natural. Bishop c3, so Prague felt that, um, well, he had to hurry, um, so he didn't, didn't drop this bishop back 
um, but just allowed the bishop to be taken on d3. But yeah, again, with black, I think I'd be very pleased with this position. Even though that exchange has sort of um, helped white's coordination, this bishop does look really nice on c3. Even so, I would be delighted to grab those two bishops. And well, now this knight could be rather menacing coming to f5, so g6 feels like a very natural move. I know this bishop looks quite nice, but still this white can't apl apply pressure on the knight on f6. b3 gives the bishop a little bit of room. h5 feels really natural to potentially push that knight back. It would be nice to put it in the corner, so knight f4. Um, that's a pretty ugly move, though, and, well, Niemann takes the chance to swipe that one off and play d4, which shuts out that bishop, and this feels very attractive with these pawns here and opens up this diagonal, and particularly as black has the initiative here. I mean, this, this just feels as though the opening has just gone so smoothly for black. I don't think Niemann has played very special moves here. Um, very straightforward, classical moves, nice hanging pawns, bishop look, bishops look good. Um, feels inviting to take here and yeah, black is just going forward in this position. Threatening mate, f3. Diagonal is blocked, but after rook e8, well, that is such an inviting square for the rook. So rook f2 kind of protects these points here, but it's not nice to split those rooks. Now, because the diagonal is blocked, then this bishop has lost some of its purpose here. It's tempting to play h3, but after g3, white is still solid enough in that position. And I like Niemann's next move, a5, which allows the bishop to come to a6 as it'll be protected by the rook. And a5, well, could be used sometimes to play a4. Of course, it's, it's again, a pretty standard move. Bishop a6, just increasing the pressure. Could have pushed with a4, actually, that's an interesting move, but bishop a6 feels very nice, because that knight doesn't have anywhere to go to, actually. Well, at least, well, we'll see. It might might come to an, a square in a second, but um, yeah, very uncomfortable for white here. Bishop a3, played, attacking the pawn. Well, it's about, about time. Prague tried to find some counterplay. Rook c8. And here, well, there could be a threat to play h3, which inevitably would force um, g3, and then that pawn would be vulnerable, then an exchange, and black would just be able to take the pawn on f3. Therefore, h3, well, needs must, but it's, it's not very attractive. Because it leaves that pawn, well, you know, well and truly isolated, and you know this this square is weak as well. Uh, my computer indicates that Queen F five is the most accurate move here, and with a very simple idea of on the next turn exchanging and then simply taking that pawn. And I don't think there's a, much that White can do about that. Niemann plays knight h5, which also looks very attractive. Looking at the pawn here, uh, and also looking at that square. But um, knight c3 played, um, exploiting that pin, so the knight did find a way out. Um, still looks great for black. Um, the computer suggests queen d8 here and thinks that black is still better. Um, but Niemann played queen f5, which again looks the most natural move. But actually, white is, is in with a shout. 
White has a chance here. If White finds Bishop takes c5, um, and and that gives White enough counter chances apparently. But Prague took on c5, takes, and after this move, Black is better again. Everything has just gone very smoothly in this position actually. Um, this pawn is an absolute monster. And, you know, the knight looking to come in here. The knight looks really menacing. Queen takes a5. Knight e2 check. Well, Prague has swiped that pawn, but this one looks just so strong. I mean, the, these are obviously going nowhere for the moment. And the queen is offside. Dare I say, it is rather in Siberia. And queen e5, excellent move, emphasizes that. Nice centralization, looks down here, but also, you know, looks to come in on a1, and that would be immediately fatal. Rook f1 guards the back rank. Now, the bishop is attacked, so it steps back. And that's very nice, because knocking out that knight would mean that, so well, black is breaking through, basically. Rook d1. Trying to sort of round up that pawn. So bishop takes, pawn takes. And this position just must be winning for black. You know, you can just feel it here. Black is so well coordinated. This pawn is well placed on d3. King is really weak. The queen is offside. There's a bit of a pin here. I mean, you know, all these elements add up to a winning position for black. And... Well, this is a good move. Let me show you this. Knight g3 check. This is not what happened. And now rook c8 is really powerful. Attacking the bishop. And if, let's say, bishop b4, then the queen comes in. And rook c2, that's pretty straightforward. Black is just going to attack the g2 pawn. And if b4, then here is a very nice sideways manoeuvre looking at the rook. You can see that b pawn just shuts off the queen. So the queen can't, back to, can't return to defend. And after rook takes queen e2, threatening the rook, but also threatening mate in two with queen f1 check and there is no defense you know so knight g3 is a winning move there's, there's no doubt about it this is the kind of position where you know if you had black you would really like kind of five minutes maybe to work out these variations because there's a few delicate steps in there but Niemann didn't have that much time you know, we're already at move 34, and they only started with 15 minutes. Time was ticking. He played knight c3, which doesn't look bad. But after this, knight takes e4. I mean, it, it feels really powerful. This knight still looks really menacing. And this pin is very annoying. But actually, Prague finds a defense. Rook d8. Good move. So that sort of pins black down a little bit. Not possible to take here because of this. Um, if this is taken, then watch out because suddenly there could be something very nasty here going on. Supported by the bishop. Um... So, Niemann played knight g3 check, and it still feels as though there could be something here, but actually, there isn't anything. He tried a few checks, checked with the queen, checked again, and they repeated the position. Queen e5 check. 
and the game ended in a draw. So Prague escaped by the skin of his teeth. He found this really important move, rook d8, just in time. Um, I would say Niemann would probably be very disappointed after that game. I can't. I don't think I watched this one live actually. Um, seems to me that you know he outplayed Prague for most of the game, but couldn't quite clinch it. A very classical um, attack, I think, from from Black. You know, with these hanging pawns, and then you know playing moves like h h5, h4. And, and just storming through the centre, actually, with these moves, queen d5, really nice position. But he couldn't quite clinch it. Uh, let me say that the US Championship is taking place 4th to the 20th of October. And, well, the participants, Caruana, Aronian, So, Dominguez, that's basically their Olympiad team. Plus others such as Sam Shankland and Hans Niemann. So um, stay tuned, and uh, at some moment when I when I get uh, a little bit of free time, I will be reporting on the U.S. Championship. And seeing how everyone got so, gets on, I'll be uh, very intrigued to see some of the results there. Thanks for watching.